What's the most ridiculous fact that you know? What's something addicting that people don't realize is addicting? What's something that monkey cannot buy? Monkey cannot buy banana. Poor monkey. They did an experiment where they introduced currency to monkeys, and they ended up spending it on sex with each other. Too lazy to find the article. At least you're honest. Love. I don't care too much for monkey, because monkey can't buy me love. Spell chechers. Comments passed the vibe check. They sure did. What movie has the best soundtrack? The Lord of the Rings trilogy and the first two Spider-Man films that Danny Elfman was involved with. Obviously, the animated Tarzan movie. I think we can all agree that Phil Collins did not have to go that hard on that soundtrack. Forrest Gump has a double disc soundtrack if I'm not mistaken, and it's all pretty damn good. Drive. Pulp Fiction. The Nightmare Before Christmas. The Shawshank Redemption. Christopher Nolan films always deliver a good soundtrack. Hans Zimmer is a great componist. Lord of the Rings. How to Train Your Dragon. What do people commonly accept as fact, but is actually false? That if you touch baby animals, their mothers will reject them. This is news to me about that. I've been thinking that my entire life. You'll catch a cold if you go outside and it's cold. The trucks known as cement trucks are actually concrete trucks. Now we're just being a little too meticulous there. That gum stays in your stomach for seven years if you swallow it. I'm glad this one's not true, because it doesn't make any sense. Pineapples grow on trees. No, they do not. That sugar makes kids hyper. People conveniently forget the excitement around sugary foods, especially if they've treated as a special treat, which plays into children having energy because they just got a special treat. Or it's birthday cake at a fun party or fun candy after trick-or-treating. I before E, except after C. Yeah, isn't that weird? Wait a second. What's a sound or noise growing up that you don't hear anymore. The sound of a dialing a number on a rotary dial phone. The national anthem playing when television stations signed off at night. Be kind, rewind. The sound of that VCR and warm plastic smell. Take me back. Take me back. House phone ringing. The sound of VHS going in. Bad broom. Bad broom. A busy signal before there was voicemail. You'd have to keep calling back until you got through. That movie theater phone recording of movie times. The music for the digitally THX mastered logo at the introduction of 1990s VHS movies. I don't necessarily miss that one. It was a little too loud for my liking. The Wii themes. Nothing's stopping you from going back and playing your old Wii. What's your favorite thing to do on the weekends? Nothing. I'd do nothing all the time if I could. I like moonlit walks on the beach. I like to go hiking. Two to three hours walking alone in nature. It's wonderful. Don't say mass. <laughs> don't say mass. Ah, <laughs> uh, have a <laughs> Playing Age of Empires 4. How are you today? I don't think anyone asked me that today. So thank you, Reddit, for asking how my day was. Tired and tired of dealing with people. I'm hungry. I got no sleep, and I have a long, busy day today. Still too early to tell, but I did have my coffee, so it's starting out pretty good. Not gonna lie, boss, I've been better. I'm sad. Adults of Reddit, what's the best advice you can give to us teenagers? Don't take the drama of high school too seriously, because in a few years, you'll realize how completely dumb it was. You are not nearly as smart as you think you are. When I was in, when I was a teenager, I definitely thought I was way smarter than I am. Then I graduated, and now I'm 24 and kind of a stupid, so <laughs> ask them out. They say no, oh uh, well. They say yes, woohoo. Do not quit your hobbies. A lot of people learn a musical instrument or a sport as a kid and then quit in order to hang out when they're a teenager. Keep it up and you could be f***ing great at a musical instrument or a sport and therefore have a cool extra string to your bow as an adult. You could be a fit and sporty adult or the kind of person that people want in their band or orchestra. So keep up your hobby. Don't take your teen years too seriously. It's a blink of an eye in the big picture. Work hard at anything you do. Most importantly, put real effort into maintaining friendships. As you get older, friends drift away and the next thing you know, you're in your 40s realizing you let some good people slip away. There's nothing wrong about having a normal life. You don't need to be the greatest person ever. If a partner is possessive and jealous, run and don't look back. You'll thank yourself later. Start investing ASAP. What's the biggest lie most people believe? The taste bud map of your tongue. F***ing <laughs> lies. Insurance giving people peace of mind. I'm fine. <laughs> that fish grow to the size of their containers. That one is true. I released a goldfish into Lake Michigan and it destroyed a whole town. Can confirm. I put a great white into a one gallon fish tank and now I have a not so great white. I never got your email. Bullshit. <laughs> that whole wheat bread is healthier than regular bread. All it has is more fiber and that's it. Your intestines, namely the bacteria in your bowels, need a lot of fiber to maintain a healthy balance. Which musician has never written a good song? Oh boy. <laughs> this is gonna be uh, very controversial. Elvis never even wrote a song. Not one. DJ Khaled. A lot of them. Ghost writers exist for a reason. Frank Sinatra. He didn't write any of his material. 6 9 I don't know what the f*** his name is. I might get chewed out for this one, but Beyonce. Yeah, you deserve to get chewed out for this one because this one is just flat out wrong. Beyonce has a bunch 
bunch of really good songs, and it's not even like a subjective opinion. Yoko Ono, the Catch Me Outside. What's the first thing you do once you wake up? Calculate if I can go back to sleep. Yeah. Look at my alarm clock and calculate how much effort I need to put into quickly getting ready. Spend five minutes to an hour trying to catapult out of bed. An hour? Good lord. Stretch as loudly and dramatically as possible. I do this every morning and it freaks my dog out every time. Check phone for time. Drink two glasses of water. I wish I was as good as you. What's a cartoon character you've always had a crush on? Katara and Korra from Avatar. Kim Possible. Gwen from Ben 10. I still got the hots for Aladdin. James from Team Rocket was legit an awakening for me. Jesse for me. A lot of the adult women in Pokemon are very fine. Lusamine from Alola from Sun and Moon. Woo! Don't even get me started. Hercules was so damn fine. The hunky one. Marceline from Adventure Time. Shell from El Dorado. Katara and Leela. Jessica Rabbit. She's just drawn that way. Phineas and Ferb's sister. What was her name again? Candace, I think. Oh no. Oh no. Candace dick fit in your mouth. Ah, got him. Which TV series can be identified by a single quote? I don't watch a lot of TV, so I'm going to see if I can get all these. Oh, the Simpsons, I believe. Yabba Dabba Doo. I don't know about this one. Maybe the, the Flintstones, I'm thinking. Bite my shiny metal ass. Huh, I don't know any shiny metal ass. So I'm gonna skip that one. It was Legend. Wait for it. Dairy. Diggity. Shut up, Meg. Anyone else have a bunch of Family Guy clips on their TikTok for you page, or is that just me? Are you ready, kids? Aye, aye, Captain. I can't hear you. Aye, aye, Captain. What's the longest or most complicated word you can say? Oh, so you guys just want to see me make a fool of myself. Oh, wait, I know this one. Okay. <clears throat> anti disestablishmentarianism Woo! First try. Make way for the German. What? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, nah. I, I, no. No, <laughs> I'm not doing that one. Huh? It's a Finnish word. Hold on. I'm not saying this word either. Komi, komi vai hekil uwat itunt imitari. <laughs> oh no. I know that one's wrong. Is the longest one I can remember right now. It's a fairly simple compound word, so it's easy to say if you know Finnish. Well, I don't know Finnish. Nahasa pima patilon. I don't know. Oh, it's uh, anti disestablishmentarianism again. Either that or hippopotamonstrosa squipedeliophobia. But that one isn't real. <laughs> Love. Bro, that's deep. All these crazy words in the comments, and I'm embarrassed to say mine is Worcestershire. What can nobody on earth look cool doing? St <laughs> standing beside your dog while it <laughs> Trying to sip a drink from a straw that has moved. Walking up the stairs at a water park holding an inflatable inner tube. Filming TikToks in public. Running in shallow water. Running while wearing a heavy backpack. It's a lot of running. I'm, I'm good. I'm good on that. The incident where Michael Jackson caught his hair on fire in the 80s was within a day, the exact halfway point of his life. A, 82958, date of his birth. B, 127-1984, date of his burn incident. 625-2009, date of his death. Between A and B, 9 to 9,282 days. Between B and C, 9,281 days. My most ridiculous fact is that someone took the time to figure that out. Every C in the Pacific Ocean is pronounced differently. If you take a leech and put it in a maze, it will eventually find its way around. If you take that leech, blend it, and feed it to another leech, that leech will already know its way around the maze. This is called chemical memory. There exists a jellyfish by the name of Turritopsis, Dorney, that can control its own aging process, making it immortal. What's the most unsettling movie you've ever watched? I was looking for Iron Man on a questionable streaming app, and I came across Tetsuo the Iron Man, and I thought, I like Japanese movies, this could be fun. It was not, it was not fun. The Girl Next Door. The strange thing about the Johnsons. One of Ari Aster's hereditary Midsummer earlier projects. Watch it. Midsummer's ending still haunts me. Not unsettling at all to others, but for some reason, What's Eating Gilbert Great upsets and unsettles me more than any movie I've ever seen. I'm a caretaker for a disabled sibling, and a lot of the things in the movie hit too close to home. The poor kid finding his mom dead and not knowing she's dead absolutely unsettled me. Hereditary, the car scene. Either Dear Zachary or Threads. Both movies will affect your mood for the rest of the day. I think about Dear Zachary often. Wish I didn't. Still Alice. It is not a horror film. Lighthouse with Willem Dafoe. A scene in Hereditary when Tony Collette finds you know what and is wailing off camera. That whale was absolutely inhuman. Tony Collette is an amazing actress. What cancelled series do you think deserves another season to tie up loose ends? Mindhunter on Netflix. Pushing daisies. My name is Earl. Ended with a cliffhanger and I don't like how they did Joyce so wrong. Carnivale. Glow. Santa Clarita Diet. I found the show kind of boring in some parts, but the cliffhanger at the season finale really made me want to find out what was going to happen next. I am not okay with this. Every f***ing thing on Netflix. They cancelled way too fast. Utopia 2013. Hands down one of the best series that deserves a proper ending. 
Last Man on Earth, Raised by Wolves, Hannibal, What's the Coolest Thing You Own, Somewhere in My Mum's House, I have a framed animation cell of Roadrunner and Wile E. Coyote signed by Chuck Jones. I was a massive Looney Tune fan as a kid, and when I was six, my big sister wrote to him to ask for a drawing of Roadrunner for me for my birthday. He replied back with a letter wishing me a happy birthday and included the signed cell and an explanation of what it was and how the cartoons were made. One of my most treasured possessions, night vision goggles. That's actually really cool. <laughs> I don't know a single person who has one of those. Hopefully you're using them responsibly. An early 1900s book for Japanese immigrants with English phrases written out phonetically for Japanese speakers. I have a $7 bill from 1776, so that's pretty neat. That's got to be worth some good money. Probably more than $7. Aretha Franklin signed a record for my birthday. Respect. 1987 Toyota MR2. A pewter Lord of the Rings chess set. I worked in record stores for many, many years. My music collection is the coolest thing I own. Reading this made me realize I do not own one damn cool thing. 15 acres of wood in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. People, give me wilderness. A handwritten signature from a Spider-Man mascot at Universal Studios. The guy was chill and funny and actually got excited when I asked for one, so I just kind of keep it for the good vibes from that day. Hey, that's pretty wholesome. You love to see it. People who have insanely easy, lazy jobs and make good money, what do you do? I was recently hired for 150 k a year to help a video game studio produce high-quality cinematics. They're not actually making any right now, though, so I don't really do much all day. I have to imagine it will change at some point, but it's been four months. I'm honestly not sure why they hired me. I work for a university part-time. My job is an e-learning assistant. Basically, if someone is too stupid to start a Zoom meeting, they call me and I tell them how to do it. Haven't had a call in 18 months. Still get paid. I don't want to give too many details, but the story is about one of my best friends. He was the art director for a major financial institution. His only job was to ensure branding guidelines were being followed across all the many different groups. They would send him the materials or present to him on a call and he would provide detailed feedback. That's it. He worked about two hours a day and his base salary was $200,000. He did this job for 18 months before quitting because he felt his brain dying from playing video games all day. The man is a legend. Nice try, HR. Yeah, don't snitch on yourself, fellas. I work for an answering service. I'm one of the two night guys and I work from home. Given how slow nights are, I pretty much sit around watching TV, reading books, etc. I work in a warehouse pulling orders. Our production goal is an average of 2.5 items per minute. And as long as you're at 90% of this goal, you're good. I'm practically sleepwalking through my shift and reaching 120% easy. What's one thing you absolutely hate about the internet right now? Then, clicks link, reads article. Now, do you accept our cookies? Can we send you notifications? Do you want to receive our newsletter? Seems like you have an ad block activated. Sign up to read the full article. Yeah, journalism f***ing sucks these days. Oh, man. I don't know what's true anymore. Also, I hate when people share a post based on the headline and get all bent. What if they actually read the article? It's actually nothing. The way everyone finds a reason to make enemies out of everyone else. Every website still has like 50 pop-ups, auto-playing videos, chat bots, and other annoying crap that gets between me and the content. The fact it made everyone think their opinions on every subject matter because they get a lot of likes, even if that opinion has nothing to do with objective reality. Good old echo chambers. I can't f***ing find anything anymore. A detailed search brings me the same result as a vague one. Social media is basically own a popular opinion or die, yet I'm still on Reddit. Unskippable ads. The way it's devolved into a mechanism for harvesting personal data that's used to shove targeted advertising in our faces. We use the internet to escape the world. Now we use the world to escape the internet. The internet allows people with extreme ideas congregate on the internet, making their worldviews appear more common than they actually are. What animal would be cool if it were 20 times bigger? A blue whale. A blue whale is about 79 feet long. You want a 1580 foot whale? Totally. Beavers. Imagine giant creatures building giant dams with their giant tails. All right, time to think of a joke about giant beavers. Hmm. Have you met my ex-wife? An axolotl. IRL mudkip. What animal wouldn't? Praying mantis. If those things take on small snakes at nine inches, imagine a 15 foot one. A seahorse. Those goats that fall over when frightened. Turtles. All kinds of turtles. Musk, wood, red ear, painted, all manner of Ridleys, loggerheads, false map, snapper, both common and alligator. Turtles should be 20 times their size. They're the coolest animal on earth, older than the dinosaurs. Sure, at 20 times their current size, they'd make the oceans, lakes, rivers, and forests dangerous, but hey, turtles. Chihuahuas. They would be the apex predator. Before or after they start shaking for no reason. A human boy. What? A human boy. What should come back in 2023? Lower cost of goods. My self-worth. Journalistic integrity. I don't think that one's coming back for a very long time. Sorry to inform you. My cat. Seriously, bro. I miss you. Common sense. The vibe of 2013. Did you guys know that the Harlem Shake will be 10 years old next year? What does the fox say will also be 10 years old next year? Think about it. MySpace. No. <laughs> Beanie Babies. I still got a ton I need
need to unload. Anger is red. Sadness is blue. What color is surprise? Yellow. Literally my first thought, but what color would be happiness? Safety vest yellow. The duller, greener yellow is fear. You need to drink more water. First thought, yellow. Second thought, orange. Third thought, purple. Final answer, purple. White. Surprise is bright white. Flashbang white. I personally think it's green because like yellow is for happy, purple would be for fear. I consider pink and orange, but pink is for love, I assume, and orange, well, it's certainly a color. I think I'm reading way too much into this. Also, another point is that green is right in the middle of yellow and blue, meaning it could be happy or a sad surprise depending on the context. Yeah, but green is jealousy though. On a pregnancy test, it's also blue. Pink. Bright purple. I guess we'll find out when Inside Out 2 comes out in 2022. I think I heard they're gonna add more emotion characters. This feels like an ad. What famous musicians can't play their instruments? Meatloaf was never really known as a guitar player. There's an absolute hilarious quote from his autobiography that I think fits well here. My songs are already long enough. Can you imagine if I could play leads? God help us all. Sid Vicious approached Lemmy for bass lessons saying, I can't play bass. Lemmy said, I know. The Shags got famous because they couldn't play. Freddie Mercury used to joke that his guitar only knew two chords. Like he even needed a guitar. Ozzy Osbourne openly complains that guitar manufacturers keep gifting him guitars even though he's never so much as held a guitar in his life. Lil Wayne is not very good in playing the guitar. What's something addicting that people don't realize is addicting. Being sad or angry. It's like a security blanket and if I don't have it, who am I? It's addicting and comforting being angry and sad. The last chip you keep eating. Chatting, constant exchange of messages and communication. Hate. Constantly trying to find reasons to hate. Being alone and staying home. Yeah, avoiding people can be addictive. I avoid people all the time. Scrolling on Reddit mindlessly every day to keep your mind off of more important things. Nasal sprays for colds and congestion. Biting nails. I know, it's weird. I used to be really bad about biting my nails. Then I bought a nail clipper and I feel good about it now. I don't need to bite my nails ever. It's awesome. Making money. Oh wow, I didn't know. Sounds awful. Can you tell me how to do it so I can avoid it? Sugar. It's in almost everything and people don't realize it. It's addicting. Breaking into your neighbor's house so you can chew on their mattress. Why? <laughs> Why would you do that? What's the most ridiculous fact that you know? Taser is an acronym. It stands for Thomas A. Swift's Electric Rifle. It's from a book published in 1911 called Tom Swift and His Electric Rifle. A word you can type on the top letter row of a standard keyboard is typewriter. And the only word in the English language with three consecutive double letters is bookkeeper. I'm a bookkeeper. Teddy Roosevelt wanted a wrestling ring in his New York governor's office. When he didn't get one, he told people to meet him at the governor's mansion until he tweaked his back. When he was president, he learned jujitsu in the Oval. A group of chipmunks is called a scurry. In French, the word for vagina is masculine. Le va Ants outnumber humans one million to one. Antidepressants work on lobsters, bro. Hey, that's why it's so rare for lobsters to be blue. That's actually a really good joke. What story of yours sounds totally made up, but is actually 100% true? To shake his hand when being introduced to Bill Gates, I handed him a margarita. Back in sixth form when I had to take the bus to get there, I was once late because the bus driver thought he was driving a totally different bus route. Divorced and fought cancer by 23. Good lord, man. You don't need to achievement hunt that quickly. One of my toenails fell off and is now floating around in the sea because I dropped a plate on my foot. Ew. I vomited into a trash can in my room and then started to sh myself at the same time. Man, that's unbelievable. I mean, I can believe that because it's happened to a few people I know. Not the trash can bit, but still. I stepped on a Lego with bare feet once and didn't cry. Okay, but you are lying. You, like, you're absolutely lying. What's the smallest amount of power you've seen go to someone's head. Um, I'd say a lot of fast food managers really go crazy with it. Being a Reddit moderator. Wild. Draw four. Fool. Plus two. Uno really does give you those anime moments. Line leader in my daughter's preschool class. The line moves where my will dictates. Facebook group admins. People take a lot of social media, like, power roles way too seriously. How do you feel about mint chocolate chip ice cream. I like it, but sometimes the chocolate chips are too much. I wish there was just straight mint ice cream. So, kind of funny story in my family. My grandmother has a major sweet tooth, but was always on some crazy diet. So she started keeping mint chocolate chip ice cream around. She hated the flavor and figured if that was the only dessert she had as an option, she'd have dessert less. But naturally, it just made mint chocolate chip become her favorite flavor. On the flip side, I loved it as a kid. Loved mint, had that 
weird mint chip flavored gum would always become my go-to flavor until I got extremely sick of it. Now I pretty much don't have the stuff and sometimes wonder if her method would make me love it again or actually be effective in keeping me from having it. I always enjoyed it. I now also like that it has the bonus feature of repulsing my husband so I don't worry about him eating it all before I get to have some like with every other ice cream flavor in the house. Growing up, I was the only boy. I had three older sisters. The only other male in my home was my dad. All the girls liked mint chocolate chip ice cream. My father did not. So when we got ice cream, we would get the mint chip and then something else for my dad. Well, my stupid child brain assumed it was because mint chip was for girls and whatever my dad got was boy flavor. I didn't even try the mint chip ice cream until I was a teenager. It is super good, by the way. I'm glad you figured out ice cream does not have gender stereotypes, so thank you. Mint chocolate Oreo is elite. Oh, absolutely. It's like cookies and cream ice cream, but it's mint. Oh, oh, baby. I don't like it. Ice cream is already cold, and then the extra feeling of coolness from the mint is overbearing for me. You know, that's fair enough. I agree. It tastes like frozen toothpaste. Are you saying you don't eat toothpaste? Chips gotta be small, but noticeable. Or at least some kind of softer chocolate. There's nothing worse than biting into a fat chunk of frozen chocolate. With that, truly S-tier ice cream, not gonna lie. I feel seen, I feel heard, because sometimes the chocolate chips are just like big chunks, and it's like, why would I want this? What is an unofficial tax on the poor? Bank overdraft fees. 100%, like if I do not have enough money, do not let me spend it? Like what, what are you talking about? Many poor neighborhoods don't have options. They have just one pharmacy or one grocery store or one gas station. So those businesses can charge higher prices since their customers don't have anywhere else to go. When you are poor, everything is taxing. Very, very true, actually. <laughs> rent. I can't afford to buy a house, so I have to rent, otherwise I'll have no place to live. But all my money is going towards rent and food, so I have no money to save for a house down payment. And rent is rising. What's worse is rent is more than a mortgage. This actually makes me think of a previous question of what job doesn't contribute to society and it's landlords. Being forced into what's often a lower quality education because, at least in America, local property tax dollars are the primary funding source for public schools. Late fees. Oh, 100%. Like, it's unbelievable. Even with internet, it's like $10 each week that you don't pay, up to like $150. That's so much more. The lottery. I guess I see that. It's kind of just preying on desperate people. Payday loans. Do not fall for those scams of like, oh yeah, this app sent me $100 and now I can pay for food. It's no, because you have to pay that back later. It's not free money. What is the weirdest fake fact you've seen people believe? Other than flat earth, let's see what people said. That Mountain Dew and hydrogen peroxide glow in the dark when mixed. Einstein failed high school math. I love making up lies about historical figures because who, who actually knows this? That if you type in your debit card pin backwards, it is a way to contact the police if you're being held robbed at an ATM. I've literally never heard this before. I can't imagine this working. Steel wool comes from sheep that graze in iron-rich pastures. While that would be cool, I mean, that only would exist in a fantasy world. A former friend once expressed his dislike for wind turbines because they slow down the wind. No, buddy. They're... Th oh, whatever. If you read, your eyes become warm, and if you step out into the cold while your eyes are warm, they'll be damaged. My mom actually believes this. I mean, if that's true, then I'm in winter time, so I might need some workers comp. For me, it's gotta be Pizzagate. If you genuinely believed Pizzagate, then never speak to me. Margarine is plastic. It's not that it is plastic, the rumor was that it's one ingredient away from being plastic. Deer turn to elk at a given altitude. I've never understood how people believe this one. Animals are not like Pokemon, everyone. They don't go to higher altitude to evolve like you would give it a firestone or something. Pineapples grow on trees. They don't no, they grow on pineapple bushes. It is a little strange that they come from the ground, though. You can spawn one pound of anything two times a year into the palm of your hand. What are you choosing? Seeds of extinct plants. I like that answer. You're, you're being a little selfless with it. I like it. These buffalo seasoned sesame sticks I got down in Arizona when I was 17. Every once in a while, I get a hankering for them, but they're not super easy to get a hold of. But I think a pound twice a year would satisfy that craving, but keep them limited enough to be a special occasion. Asian. I hope in this scenario I can spawn them in a bag though, cause otherwise it'll just make a mess all over the floor. I feel bad that my first thought
thought was donuts. Wouldn't be rich, but hey, I have donuts. Homer Simpson? One pound of Jeff Bezos blank checks with his signature, of course. Checkmate. How about one pound of Jeff Bezos? Just steadily over the course of a few years, you just deteriorate him into nothing? Poker chips of the highest realistic value. The money is already laundered for you. I read Pork Chops and I was like, yeah, a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> saffron. Okay, is saffron like super expensive? I don't know enough about like spices. The Philosopher's Stone. I know what it really is and I choose enlightenment. What is the best thing you have heard slash learned from therapy? When you place unexpressed expectations on someone, you are the one setting yourself up to be let down. No one sees the version of you that you see of yourself. The brain isn't designed to keep us happy. It's designed to keep us alive. Harsh truth, but I, yeah, sure. The fact that you are high functioning doesn't mean that your illness is easier for you to deal with. It means it's easier for others to deal with. People aren't nearly as concerned about everything I'm doing as I think they are. They're busy enough being self-conscious about their own behaviors. Never think you're in it alone because everybody's dealing with something. You just can't see it all the time. Sometimes when we procrastinate, it's because we need to feel control. Even when the only thing we can control is choosing not to do something. Even when it contributes to making our situation worse. Took me years to come to terms with that one, that you can't control how people act towards you, but you can control how you react to them. It's something I use with my nine and six year old to help them and it's so effective. Just lurking so my broke, depressed <laughs> can absorb some secondhand professional advice. I mean, hey, in this economy, you gotta get it where you can find it. What's the absolute best smell in the world to you? We'll never forget the smell of eucalyptus trees while driving near the California coast on a sunny day. I moved from the UK to Canada and it's really really hard to get British tea over here. I get really homesick sometimes and occasionally I find a box of PG tips in the grocery store. I love opening a fresh box of that tea and just inhaling because it smells exactly like my dad's kitchen when I was a kid. Baking bread. There is just something really nice about it. Freshly laundered sheets. The best part is the IRS will never know. Fresh cut lumber, especially cedar. Haven't had many opportunities to smell freshly cut wood, but uh, maybe one day. My wife's hair. She flips it around, I smell it, and I'm like, okay, you tell me what you need done. Garlic simmering in olive oil. Aw, oh, come on, don't make me hungry right now. The smell of soil when it rains. Oh, yeah. Blowing out a candle. I don't know why I love it, lol. What's a terrible way to die? Burnt to death or mauled to death by a dog are some of the most painful ones, but the worst to me is starvation. Slowly, over weeks without food, shriveling up until you take your last breath. Boiled. Some people discuss whether it's worse to die drowned or burnt, but I gotta tell you, the worst one definitely is getting boiled. Basically, it's a non-stop torture since you'll slowly get hotter and hotter from the inside, feeling all your organs burn, and there'll be a moment where even breathing will hurt. You also, it's a really slowly death, so yeah, I think it's the worst way to die. Yeah, now you're gonna think twice about boiling that crab or lobster or whatever. I would have to say, if you were an astronaut and you died slowly drifting away from Earth, I mean, that would end up being suffocation, right? I think that guy who went cave diving, got stuck upside down, and had a heart attack while trapped was a pretty f*** <laughs> that way to go. I imagine dying in a crowd crush like those poor souls in Soul on Halloween. You can see freedom just past you, but are slowly being smothered by others, slowly smothering frightened people, and are unable to move to get there. Peeling your hangnail super slowly, skin that keeps peeling all the way to your face slash back, slash legs slash chest until there's no more skin. Okay, people aren't gonna unravel like a fruit roll-up. I don't know how you're getting this idea. My deepest fear since childhood is being trapped in something that is slowly filling with water. The panic, the fear, the desperation, fighting for air, fighting to live while knowing there is no way out. Makes me want to cry and throw up just thinking about it. What's a hill you're willing to die on every time? Health insurance should cover the whole body. The fact that vision and dental are separate things is a pure cash grab. Public libraries are undervalued by many. Apparently mine has like a public 3D printer and laser cutter? Like, I didn't know that. Use a goddamn turn signal. Really isn't hard, people. Built into every car. Children beauty pageants are creepy as f and parents who subject their children to such scrutiny and judgment are crazy and don't deserve children. People are completely fine with immoral slash morally gray actions as long as it's someone they like doing it. Radio stations should play more than 250 songs. Disagreeing is 
not a personal attack. It depends on what you're disagreeing about. Apologies mean nothing without changed behaviors. This is very true. If you just apologize over and over but do nothing to change, then you are the problem. What did you try and find out it's not for you? A lot of sports growing up. Oh, I tried almost everything. Being a cop, not the right personality for it, went back to being a medic. Good choice. The hospitality sector. I can't even begin to imagine the amount of crap you had to deal with. Being a f***ing people pleaser. Good for you. It is definitely not great. Programming. You would think with how much time I spend on my computer, I'd be okay with programming, but oh, coding is, oh, I just, my brain hurts. Polyamory. At least you gave it a shot. I mean, it's definitely not for everyone, but good on you for trying. Today. I tried today and it's just not working for me. I want to go back to bed and try again tomorrow. Well, that's the glory of life, pal. You can. People who work in morgues or with the dead, what is the creepiest thing you've witnessed? Funeral director here. About 15 years ago, I had a lady whose husband passed from a terrible motorcycle accident. When she came in to make arrangements, she mentioned that she wanted his leather jacket back. Not terribly uncommon for people to want the personal effects back. However, in this case, the jacket was ripped and torn and saturated with blood and had bone fragments embedded in it. Personal effects from the coroner's office are usually returned in a sealed bag. The second it was given to her, she took it out and put it on. It smelled terrible. I truly hope she is doing okay now. I mean, people grieve in different ways. If someone's been down for more than a day or two, they'll start decomposing from the inside out. If the room is quiet enough, you can hear lots of gurgling and rumbling as the gases and fluids are moving around inside. And then you move them and they groan as the residual air in their lungs is forced out past their vocal cords. I will admit that would be very creepy if the dead person went, Ugh. My wife is a mortician. She's had quite a lot of wacky experiences. This is more funny than creepy, but once she was trying to break up the rigor mortis in a deceased hip by flexing the entire leg up. Her grip slipped and the leg swung down. The heel cracked her right in the face, resulting in a black eye. She had to explain to people that she's not in an abusive relationship, she just got kicked in the face by a dead guy. That is a really funny story to tell at like parties, just oh yeah no, dead guy, fought back. Worked at a mortuary for a few years. We have methods to keep the jaw shut for viewing, otherwise it would gape open due to the angle of the head and neck. During a viewing, the device failed and this gentleman's mouth literally popped open. The lead embalmer was not on site, so I did my best. Ushered the family out of the room and super glued his mouth shut, but he didn't have teeth and super gluing just his lips did not work. It looked as if he was attempting to scream. I had to call in one of our other mortuaries in town and that embalmer used a giant needle and thread to sew his mouth shut from under his chin to his palate. Oh, gross. I don't like that. Sometimes a fresh corpse will get shaky limbs. Make it a b to bag it in a hurry. I'm not dead. What? I'm not dead. He says he's not dead. I got punched in the balls by a dead guy. I used to work hospital security. Part of our job was to help with 1080 assists, movement of bodies to and out of the morgue. I was on a call to move one and the body's limbs were sticking out at odd stiff angles. I attempted to move the corpse's arms into a better spot to shimmy the bag into the body fridge. His arm stayed in place for a moment, but when I released my grip, smack! Old buddy hit me right in the sack. Look, if he wanted a T-pose, let him rest easy. What gets grosser the longer you think about it? The digestive system. Technically a hole through your body. Toothbrushes. You use it to clean your dirty mouth every day. Hopefully twice. Then leave it to sit in the bathroom until you use it again. Just using water to rinse it off. Yeah, the amount of dust and like pee particles that could get on there is a little gross. Swallow some spit. Now spit it onto a cup and swallow it. I do think the rule of thumb is once a bodily fluid leaves the body it is a little bit grosser to take it in again. There's poo inside of you always. Nuh-uh, I poop it all out. Mm. Eyelash mites. The fact that the base of your eyelashes is a giant forest for these tiny little creatures. Yes, you have them. The fact that if you smell something, you're most likely tasting it too. Kissing. It's f***ing weird. Let me briefly open my squished up mouth on your skin to show you my affection. Or, let's spend a few seconds smushing our dirty face holes together because we love each other. Weird. They're just mad that no Nobody's wanting to kiss them. What's a movie that genuinely had you bawling with laughter? Naked Gun. Those old spoof movies really were something. Planes, trains, and automobiles. I remember being in tears the first time I saw the highway truck scene. The steering wheel being bent forward. Tropic Thunder. By today's standards, it is a little problematic, but it, it's kind of funny. Death at a Funeral. British version. One of the funniest.
funniest films I have seen in a long time. What We Do in the Shadows. Same with the new TV show. The TV show is actually pretty good. Women of Reddit. What's one thing all men should know about periods? Periods can last anywhere from three days to ten-ish days each month, and can range from very light flow of blood to so heavy it looks like you're bleeding to death for several days straight. It's different for every woman and can differ from period to period. We cannot control when we get them and we can't just hold it in. Did somebody tell you to just hold it in before? What a moron! It is nothing like the tampon ads at all. Just one fucking sneeze can bring ultimate chaos. Premenstrual syndrome, PMS, can be awful for some and can even be worse than the actual period itself. Depends on the person though. Days before a period you can feel exhaustion, cramps, bloating, acne, food cravings, mood swings, and more. Also, if you have PMS for a week, then a period for a week, there are only two weeks out of the month where you are not in terrible pain. That's half your existence dealing with period-related pain. Men, please treat your women right. Like, come on, they're dying. Like, every day. Sleeping on that bloody first night of pain is hellish. What tastes better? A little burnt. Potatoes. Hash browns specifically. Broccoli. I don't know why, but broccoli. Most anything you grill. I like things a bit more than a little charred. Grilled onions. Grilled cheese, 100%. Oh god, I really want a grilled cheese and oh, some tomato soup. Oh, I'm so hungry. Cauliflower. It's like a totally different vegetable once you've roasted it and have gotten some charring on it. Never been a big fan, but maybe I'll try it. What is the worst feeling ever? Kidney stones. I'm praying I never get those. I, I'm trying to drink more water, okay? That feeling you get right after losing a person slash pet that you love so dearly. It's such a hopeless feeling. Like you're reaching out and crying for someone who just minutes before was there. That's the worst feeling ever. That gut-wrenching feeling you get when you realize you f***ed up something very badly and you can't fix it anymore. You know that feeling when you just wake up and for a second everything seems okay? Yeah. The feeling right after when you remember everything is, in fact, not okay. When you are eating and you suddenly hear a crack and realize you just broke your tooth. I feel like that's also followed up by searing pain in your mouth, shooting yourself on a plane. Oh, I, I hope that never happens. Just the amount of embarrassment and like not, like helplessness because you can't do anything. What should be illegal to put ketchup on? Chocolate. Oh, oh, who's, no, who's doing this? Someone else's child. But on your own child is perfectly fine? I mean, the kid's gonna put ketchup on themselves regardless. Like, I mean, who am I to stop them? My stepdaughter enjoys ketchup with Oreos. Oh, no, don't say that. An open wound. Why? Are you trying to confuse people? Like, it's not a prank. Banana. Oh, it looks like we got a minion in the chat. My kid dips his blueberries in ketchup. That should at least be a misdemeanor. What is with fruit and ketchup? I Like, I get it. It's fruit on fruit. But what are you doing? What was the incident at your high school? When I was a sophomore, it was known around campus that a specific set of lockers that was between the campus and football field was off limits because over summer break, some kids blew the door off a locker with a dry ice bomb and a propel bottle. Shrapnel! Two years into my relationship with my now husband, he starts telling a very familiar story and I realize he was the fabled dry ice bomber my school had been talking about for the past seven years. I was at my grad ceremony and this one guy, while walking the stage, pulled his pants down and mooned everyone. Not exactly sure what happened to him, but I heard he got suspended and got his diploma taken away from him. I don't understand a punishment like that. He already got the diploma. Do you want to keep him in the school after an action like that? Somebody attempted to burn down the school, but only half succeeded. They had to demolish the old part of the school where the fire was started and rebuild an entire new wing. Bright side was we got the first 25 meter pool in the country. You heard it here first, kids. Burn down your school, get a new pool. Don't do that, actually. It's not gonna always work. And that's arson. <laughs> Some kid <laughs> his pants and threw up while we were doing a couple miles run. Worst part is the closest person to him when it happened was his crush. Oh no. Oh, buddy. Our entire class of over 600 kids was kicked out of a pep rally for having too much pep. This girl got accused of having fake <laughs> so she pulled them out. Okay. Weird, weird school, I guess. One of the students in my high school had some kind of issue with her bowels. When she sh** herself in the school's main area, a nearby student recorded her and shared the video with the 
entire school. I wasn't involved, but I'm sure the student in question is probably traumatized from that. Yeah, that's kind of cyberbullying to a certain extent. What fan base genuinely scares you? Some of the craziest people I ever met were in the knitting community. I know you wouldn't think it from first glance, but there's so little people in there, there has to be a lot of weirdos. League of Legends. I'm not scared for me, but for them. They all adamantly warn you to stay away from LOL and say they hate playing the game, yet can't stop. LOL also has the reputation of having extreme toxicity, so it sounds like they are all trapped by some invisible force in a mire of toxins. Anyone who is a diehard fan of a TikTok influencer. I don't even know who the influencers are, like Charlie D'Amelio? Who are you? Crossfitters. They're intense. That vegan teacher's fan base. She has a fan base? I thought people were mostly clowning her, which was also kind of rude, but whatever. What song hits different after you read the lyrics? A lot of them, but we'll see what people said. Greased Lightning. That song is filthy. When Rizzo says she skipped a period, I thought she cut class. Oh, you poor sweet innocent child. The Macarena. Song they played all the time for stuff when I was in elementary school. It's about a girl cheating on her boyfriend with multiple people while he's away. Also, this list is never complete without semi-charmed kind of life. Do you like pina coladas? I had no idea that song was about a married couple trying to cheat on each other and accidentally winding up on a date together. Hey Ya is the one that pops right away. It's a dance song with a depressing message. Barbie Girl by Aqua. You can brush my hair, undress me everywhere. Kiss me here, touch me there. Hanky panky, you can touch, you can play. Who let me sing this when I was five? Cats in the Cradle. I used to love it as a kid. Absolutely crushes me as an adult with children. What TV show is 10 out of 10 would recommend? The Chernobyl miniseries. I just wish I had HBO Max because then I could actually watch things people recommend. Band of Brothers. I mean, if you like war propaganda, then yeah. I'm kidding. It's probably good. Six Feet Under. It was way ahead of its time and has one of the greatest endings in the history of television. That sounds pretty rare. A lot of shows end not so great. Malcolm in the Middle. It's hilarious and not really a kid's show. I recently rewatched the entire series and man, I cannot believe that show was on Fox. It is very progressive. Fleabag. Definitely. I also just recently watched Fleabag and man, the first season is great. The second season hurt me. What is something people need to stop making their only personality trait? Being dumb voluntarily. At a certain point, you need to take accountability and smarten up, okay? I do MMA and some people get a little over the top with it. One guy was two classes deep and now walks around in full UFC attire and walks around with his hand wraps on. LOL. Being on something someone else is excited about for no reason other than to be contrary. It's not cute or funny, you're just being a dick. Zodiac signs. This is such an asparagus thing to say. Ugh, you would say that. Sounds like a popcorn to me. Disney. You're allowed to like what you like, but oh my god, please save your money. Stop going to Disneyland. What is a bedroom decoration that makes somebody unattractive? bottles in the corner of their room. Speaking from experience, don't ask. I, okay, I guess I won't. Knew a guy that had a framed professional photo of himself, shirtless over the top of his bed. Was that Dennis Reynolds? Cause that sounds a little sociopathic. Dolls, lots of dolls. Dolls that just stare at you. Dolls that judge your soul. Dolls that become possessed. A doll that suspiciously looks like your mother. While it could be coincidence, that's still a red flag. Pictures of their ex. I'd say it maybe depends on like the time frame of when they broke up because if it's still recent, they might've just forgotten, but whatever. Live, laugh, love. If I see that as your primary aesthetic, I'm gonna live, laugh, leave your house. Are Scarface posters still a thing? Oh God, I hope not. Fluorescent lights. It makes everyone unattractive. That's why the only kind of LED bulbs you should be buying is that soft, warm light instead of like the harsh white because oh, it's so, so bad. Parents of Reddit. What is the most unsettling thing you have heard slash seen your child do? My son walked into the room butt naked holding a pair of scissors and asked why his younger sister didn't have a p He never explicitly said he was thinking of performing surgery on himself, but we kept a close eye on him for a few weeks and hid all the scissors. Good call, because that could have been very bad. When my daughter was learning her ABCs, one morning at breakfast, she sang all the way through for the first time. We congratulated her and asked if she'd been practicing at daycare. No, mommy's mommy taught me when I was in bed. Uh, mommy's? 
his mommy died three years earlier. While it is a little creepy, at least Gma was helping the little girl out. My son went through a phase when he was six where he would write, help me, let me out, on everything. It was on all his drawings and he'd write it outside on the side of the house for the neighbors to see. Then he started writing, help me, backwards, like some red rum sh Turns out he was really into goosebumps and one of the episodes has a girl trapped in a mirror writing, help me. To the people looking into the mirror, help me was backwards. Mystery solved. My kid is just a bit theatrical. Super unrelated to them, but just saying that like, oh, he's just theatrical, that seems like a way of asking if someone's gay. Like, oh, is he, you know, theatrical? <laughs> I was putting my three-year-old to bed and she said, mommy, can I tell you a story where we all get electrocuted? Well, I want to hear it too. Yeah, you can't leave us on a cliffhanger like that. I went in to check on my sleeping daughter, who was four at the time, and she rolled onto her back and muttered in her sleep, I must not eat humans. Humans aren't food. And then rolled back onto her side. Well, at least you know she's trying to keep those affirmations. My three-year-old won't poop unless I'm right there in front of him, locking eyes as he bores holes into my soul. So precious. When we first brought our baby daughter home from the hospital, my preschool son walked up to her in her crib, looked at her and said, hello, welcome back. I mean, to be fair, technically she did return to your house just outside of the mother instead of inside. Who is one actor that was perfectly cast and for what role? Gandalf. If anyone besides Ian McKellen played him, the entire series would not be the same. Tom Hanks, Forrest Gump. He was absolutely incredible. No other actor could have nailed the role the way he did, in my opinion. I genuinely felt like I knew him and felt protective of him in a way. Forrest was just too pure. I loved him. I've never felt so strongly in a movie that the actor connected with the character so much. It was magic to watch. The volleyball as Wilson in Castaway. Impeccable performance. I mean, if they had a football, is and like, it wouldn't work. Alan Rickman for Professor Snape. Also, Alan Rickman for Hans Gruber in Die Hard. James Earl Jones as Darth Vader's voice. Not to discredit the numerous actors in the suit over the years, but his voice, tone, and delivery is what made Darth Vader's character have that presence. And James is who most people remember as Darth Vader. Meryl Streep in Devil Wears Prada. I wouldn't have thought of her based on the character and instead would have thought of Nicole Kidman or someone more fashion. But she embodied the role in a way no one else could. She even got nominated for an Oscar. Aaron Paul as Jesse Pinkman. Yeah, I really can't see anybody else playing him. Tony Stark as Robert Downey Jr. The man was born for the role. Edit. The most awesome thing is that you could exchange Tony Stark for Robert Downey Jr. and no one would even notice. Well, yeah, because they are the same person. Johnny Depp, Captain Jack Sparrow. Some actors really just own those characters and you could never see them as anybody else. What unconventional ingredient belongs in a burger? One time I didn't have buns for a burger, so I put tater tots in my waffle iron and used that as a bun. Holy ish, was delish. That actually sounds like an amazing idea. I need to go get some tater tots now. In Australia, it isn't unusual to see a slice of beetroot included. I've not seen it in any other country I visited. What is with this Australia place you keep talking about doing weird things with beetroot? Come on. Thin slice of fried Granny Smith. Goes really well with cheese. Hmm, I mean, I guess I'm not opposed to trying. Goat cheese, rocket, and portobello mushrooms. Not a huge fan of mushrooms, but maybe I'll give it a shot. Kimchi, because it's crunchy, but unlike lettuce, it's full of flavor. Doesn't work on every burger, though. You know what? Thank you. Thank you for admitting that it isn't gonna work on everything. I like to put potato chips on mine. Well, that's just the backyard barbecue special. I once went to a place with a grilled cheeseburger where the bun was replaced by two grilled cheese sandwiches. It was delicious. A fried egg isn't bad. Oh, 100%. Fried eggs on burgers is slept on. It's so good. Sour cream. I had it on a bacon cheeseburger in Savannah, Georgia, and it was really quite good. Peanut butter. Just don't go out like Elvis. What did school try to teach you that was obviously false? I drew a picture of a butterfly in preschool and got in trouble for arguing with my teacher because she said butterflies don't have legs, so my picture wasn't accurate. What? <laughs> what? That's just like such a stupid thing to tell kids. Little preschoolers? Of course butterflies have legs, you imbecile. That I wouldn't have a calculator on me wherever I go. 
<laughs> yeah, funny how that turned out. Saying no to bullies will stop them. The food pyramid. Wait, you're telling me I shouldn't eat an entire loaf of bread every day? Yeah, the dairy one was pretty forced in retrospect. I used to think, I don't know if it was just because I'm dumb and don't remember it properly, but I used to think that food pyramids had eggs classified as dairy, but I might just be wrong. <laughs> I know it's not. I know it's not dairy. I promise. Egg is protein. It's, it's like meat. <laughs> that the American Civil War was not actually fought over slavery, but over states' rights. This was at public school in Texas around 2007 to 2008. In eighth grade, sex ed, we were told that if males didn't have some sort of release, their testicles would explode. Seriously. I've always thought it was intended for comic relief, but the instructor never did give us the I'm just kidding line. Needless to say, I went to pound town regularly as a child to avoid that fate. I ain't going out like that. What's in I'll never be one of those people rule you broke. I'll never be a fat Here I am, a fat I swore never to date single moms. It was the most bittersweet thing I've ever experienced in my life. When I finally made a Reddit account just to do one thing six years ago, that I'd never be that parent with kids screaming inside a store. I think that's just unavoidable, unless your child doesn't have vocal cords. A croc wearer. Guys, there's nothing wrong with wearing crocs. Crocs are comfortable. I love crocs. Wish I had some crocs. I, I lost mine. Always swore as a kid I would never smoke. I used to cry because my parents wouldn't stop smoking. Me and my brother would say like, if you don't stop smoking, that means you don't love us. Yeah, generally always said I'd never smoke. I grew up to smoke. My father. I became a father, and I became my father. I wish I would have just listened to him, though. This would be so much easier now. Who has the clearest and purest voice you've ever heard? The girl who sang Jasmine's part in A Whole New World. Eva Cassidy. Nat King Cole. Whitney Houston. The first time I heard that voice, I was gobsmacked. So tragic what she went through. I will add Neko Case, too, because she has an amazing voice and range. Love her. Sarah Barrielles, simply because I haven't seen her mentioned yet. Has to be up there with Mama Cass and Karen Carpenter. Anya. Andrea Bocelli. Him singing Hallelujah with his daughter is incredible. Freddie Mercury. Was wondering if we were going to see him. Nora Jones for me. Celine Dion. I don't actually like her music, but her voice is absolutely beautiful. I just wish she'd sing something that did her voice justice. James Earl Jones. Ah, yes. This is a good pick. Love me some Darth Vader and other stuff that he does. <laughs> I don't know. It has to be David Attenborough. Did I get his name right this time, guys? I feel like every time he pops up, uh, I say his name wrong. So please let me know if I got it right this time. George Michael. What beloved comedy TV show or movie do you find painfully unfunny? There's a lot of them. Comedy does not really add up these days, you know? It's, uh, it's different. If you're scrolling through the comments, I can save you some time. Pretty much every comment is that they hate Big Bang Theory and Friends. Also, quite a few hate How I Met Your Mother. How I Met Your Mother is a great show, but bad ending. Friends, I don't care about. I think Big Bang Theory might be a little overhated, in my opinion. The characters are really fun, but the forced laughter is a little much. Those Disney Channel shows, the humor seems very artificial and forced. Two Broke Girls is the least funny sitcom in the history of television. Like many of the other comments, Big Bang Theory. I hold a special disdain for it whenever I tell someone I'm a physicist and their response is, oh, like Sheldon. Yeah, Bazinga. Everybody loves Raymond. It was a staple of my childhood in the 90s, but I saw a couple episodes recently and it did not age well. The intergenerational I hate my wife jokes. Yeesh. Two and a half men is just gross. Everything Chuck Lore is pretty awful. I think he did Big Bang Theory too. Seinfeld loves the Big Friends Theory. Cheers. Everybody bangs Seinfeld. Let's not. Friends. What child-friendly movie left you traumatized? The first Land Before Time movie is a lot darker and sadder than the sequels that followed. The Fox and the Hound. Getting Bambi. My mom died and I watched the movie a few months after and nobody told me Bambi's mom died. That sucks. <laughs> oh no, I'm sorry, buddy. Jumanji. I don't know why my first grade teacher thought that was a good idea. Return to Oz is terrifying. Spirited away. Don't get me wrong. I love this movie now, but back then I was definitely too young to watch parents turn into pigs. Coraline. Was it Toy Story 3 where they're all holding hands as they advance towards a fiery death? I cried in the theater. Good lord, Disney knows how to pull out the heartstrings like that. The Bridge to Terabithia. Pinocchio, 1940. This guy's old as f***. Holy moly. James and the Giant Peach. I still have random nightmares about overly large fruits. Where the wild things are. My dad took my brother and me to see it when we were kids, and I never forgot the scene where they severed arm was replaced by a stick. I don't remember that. <laughs> oh boy. What's the best response to, what are your intentions with my daughter? I'm only dating her to gain access to you. Whoo! Getting straight away with it. I need a getaway driver, sir. I'm assembling some Ikea at home and really just need a second set of hands. So maybe not on topic, but I started dating this girl in college. One night we were at the club dancing. It got crazy and I accidentally hit her in the eye with my elbow. Big shiner. That week I met her dad and had to explain that I hit her in the eye accidentally. Wow, that was uncomfortable. I imagine. I imagine that was really uncomfortable. If things go well, I intend to ask for your daughter's hand because I'm tired of using mine. Hey, let's go. I'm trying to assemble a team of 
crime fighters, and I believe she has a certain set of skills that makes people like her a nightmare to people like you. To see if I can make her as happy as she makes me. I'm saving that one. Holy moly, I'm saving that one. Just in case I ever find someone attracted to me. <laughs> Sir, with any luck at all, avoid making a total of myself and hopefully have a nice time. What's the ultimate top Christmas movie of all time? Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, 1964. I used to volunteer at a community center during my teenage years, and they had a large screen projector where they would always play it during the holiday season. The original animated How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Home Alone. I know it's new and doesn't have a cult following others here do, but after first watch, Klaus completely supplanted any others as the annual must-watch Christmas movie. I can actually agree to this. I watched Klaus last year for the first time, and it was so freaking good. It was so cute, and I'm gonna rewatch it again this year. Gremlins. No. A Christmas Story. Sure. Die Hard. Okay. Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah, I actually haven't seen that one before. Maybe I'll have to watch it this year. What's the worst thing that you can't stop doing? Procrastinating. In one word, overthinking. Caring about what other people think of me. Hating myself. Kids, could you lighten up a little? Overeating. Not only am I accustomed to big portion sizes now, but I'm so f***ing hungry all the time. I think I found a way out, but every time I'm eating sensibly, the temptation of have more is always there. Using my phone too much. Falling in love with the wrong people. I fall in love with any woman who's nice to me. Oh, man. <laughs> what made you realize you're not young anymore? Not being the youngest person at work anymore. The nostalgia reboots were for people younger than me. Sad Spyro the Dragon noises. Wasn't Spyro just a remaster? Did they reboot that? I thought it was just remastered like, like the Crash Bandicoot games. I work at a university and the first years were born after I graduated. Oh, man. When I heard some teenagers on the street laughing out loud, it annoys me. I was like that before. You get seen by a doctor that's younger than you. Hurt myself sleeping. In a video game, the old character was born the year I was. I'm in my early 30s, so by anime standards, I'm ancient. When you realize that this is it, this is my life. Having passionate conversations with friends about which vacuum cleaner to buy. Your life is in danger. What fictional character are you choosing to save you? Lassie, of course. Doesn't matter if it's quicksand or a mountain lion or a rock slide. She'll get the job done. Gandalf, Samus, Master Chief, or Shrek. I feel like Master Chief is the uh, good choice out of the four. <laughs> is the best choice. Superman should suffice. Creative mode Minecraft Steve. <laughs> Creative mode Minecraft Steve. That's so good. Great pick. Gandalf. Always Gandalf. Mac. He can give the target an ocular pat down and if necessary, step in to neutralize. What's the scariest way you've been woken up? A spider crawled onto my face. It was a huntsman, which is very common in Australian homes. Completely harmless, but rather large and hairy. Unfortunately, I have a phobia of spiders and even when I know they're not venomous, I screamed and woke the entire house. I thank God every day for not being born in Australia. Don't worry, there's no such thing as Australia. It was just made up to scare people. Tell that to my bosses. I think Australia is real, guys. Please don't, please don't uh, dock my pay. I love Australia. I was staying at a hotel. For whatever reason, they put us in a disabled room. The fire alarm went off in the middle of the night, except you don't just get a fire alarm in a disabled room. You get fire alarm plus vibrating pillows and bright flashing red lights. I thought I was being abducted by fucking aliens. I was primitive camping in some deep woods, asleep in the dead of the night when I found out a fox's bark sounds like a child getting their arm torn off. Don't think I've had that much adrenaline in me since. A surprising number of animals can sound like someone being tortured to death. Foxes, mountain lions, and even rabbits. Though in the last case, they probably are being ripped to pieces and eaten alive. Well, that's reassuring. Thanks. Woke up to find an arm laying next to me without a body. I was so scared, I grabbed the arm and threw it out of the bed, only to discover it was my own arm. I had accidentally slept on it, cutting off all circulation that I could no longer feel it. Ugh! God damn! That's so scary. I was donating blood, but passed out during it. Had a nightmare while I was passed out that evil doctors were trying to take my blood in my life. Woke up to about six doctors trying to pin me down because the needle was still inside of me and I was having spasms. I thought I woke up to those evil doctors though, so I screamed as if my life depended on it and started fighting the doctors until one of them yelled, Madam, you're at the blood bank, you're donating blood. And then I remembered. Sounds like you were successfully brainwashed into thinking you gave blood voluntarily. We don't gotta gaslight people. <laughs> we don't gotta do that. So my birthday is April 1st. In 2020, due to COVID lockdowns and my recent job loss, I was not going to celebrate my birthday and wasn't really excited about the April Fool's Day either. Also, my dad had caught COVID and was going through his treatment. I was asleep on the morning of April 1st and one of my cousins came in and told me that my dad passed away this morning. I couldn't express in words how tired and helpless I felt in those seconds. It was a nightmare. Oh man, I'm so sorry. My husband had a nightmare that he was tied to a chair about to be bludgeoned with a hot clothing iron, screamed like he was about to be murdered, and jumped out of the bed. I was confused and very scared, not knowing what all the screaming was about, so I screamed too. You know, for solidarity. Couldn't sleep for the rest of the night. Also, still tease him about it occasionally. What are you currently deprived of? Oh boy, <laughs> this should be a good thread. Let's see what do they say. Motivation to do anything. Love and
and platonic physical touch. Money, serotonin, and dopamine, but hopefully my antidepressants are working on it. Lol. Deprived of being de- Oh my god. Whew. People will just say anything on the internet these days. Deprived of being degraded like a- Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> Quality chocolate milk and Ham's beer. My local grocery store has been out for weeks now. FML. What is Ham's beer? Is it like ham flavored beer? Friends and pie. Someone just give me some pie. What subscriptions are actually 100% worth it? Costco. Aside from all the cool shit you can buy, it's well known how good they treat their employees. Also, the hot dogs and soft serve are the bomb. I pay $25 a month for Planet Fitness. I live in my car and recently drove from Florida to California over four months. Planet Fitness are every Everywhere. They all have showers. Most are 24 hour or open late. Many let me park overnight. They have massage chairs. I can also bring a guest, which I've done sometimes. I don't think I could live out of my van without it. Planet Fitness being more effective as homeless aid than as an actual gym is both wholesome and hilarious. Audible. You get an audiobook a month for very cheap and it's kept my mental health stable for years now. The internet. Kindle Unlimited. For me, Switch Online. I love my console in Splatoon and Mario Kart. Which actor or actress is far more talented than they are given credit for. Tony Collette. Guy Pierce should have become a top leading man. Andy Serkis is the best. Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Definitely Jack Black. When I saw that Jack Black was going to be Bowser in the Mario movie, oh, oh my God, I lost my mind. Paul Rudd. His performance as Ant-Man was Oscar material. Justin Long seems to be pretty underrated. Redditors. Born before 1997. What do you think of Gen Z? Gen X here. Don't care what pigeonhole they're in. If they're decent, then I like them. If they're wankers, I don't. Pretty simple, really. I don't judge them, and I sure as shit am glad I didn't grow up with social media. I feel incredibly sad you had no chance to experience life without internet or cameras everywhere. Born in 65. I don't care what generation you're from, we are all eating the same <laughs> pile. Wise words. I'm a millennial, 91, and I think they're a little crazy, but with a good reason. They're also generally speaking, doing good things as far as trying to change the workforce that was established in what, 1926? I agree that five to eight work weeks in order to barely survive is caca. Professionally speaking, I have hope. My opinion is mostly based on things I see through social media and etc as I don't really have anyone in my social circle. But the general impression I have is that Gen Z are more open-minded and inclusive, braver, more creative, and can stand up for themselves and what they believe in. I'd like them to get off my lawn. I birthed one. She's a great kid. Yes, she's an adult, but always a kid to mama. Good head on her shoulders, but only time will tell. I'm worried she'll never move out. What is something you didn't realize was going to consume so much of your time as an adult? Cooking and laundry. I wear like three different outfits every week and I just wash that same load of laundry over and over again. So the laundry's cool. <laughs> I don't do the whole colors in different loads. It's all a scam by big laundry to get you to buy more detergent. And fabric softener's a scam too. I just use a little bit of detergent and I put all of my clothes in one little laundry and it smells good and I'm clean and I'm good. Driving to places I don't even want to go. Cleaning. It never ends. Commuting. Making home-cooked dinners. Deciding what to have for dinner. What Pokemon would you eat? Who gave me this thread? Who did this to me? You guys know this is my thing. Oh, this is up. This is messed up. What the hell? All right. Krabby is the obvious choice. Krabby is one of my favorite Pokemon. Why would you say this? Slowpoke tail. Gotta try them all. Gotta fry them all. No, guys, come on. You can't do this to me. <laughs> Magikarp and chips. Misty, you're gross. You're, Misty's a child. Misty is like 10 or 11 years old, you freak. What did you think? Only rich people could afford until you realized you were just broke growing up. Orange juice. As a kid, I vowed to be able to afford as much orange juice as I wanted when I got older. Started working in high school and used my first paycheck to buy a gallon of orange juice. I drank it all in one day and got horrible diarrhea. Oh, sad. Target clothes. Apparently clothes from Target are considered cheap. I grew up thinking that's where my rich classmates got clothes. New clothes for no reason. I was so confused when I got to high school and girls would just suddenly have the new trend piece. I didn't understand why they were just allowed to have them. Things at the book fair. You could probably buy a good hoard of stuff from the book fair for $30 to $50 looking back. I was given $7 one year to buy something and I couldn't afford a book. Name brand cereal. I was looked at crazy in first grade when I said an off-brand name cereal was my favorite. The off-brands taste better, in my opinion. Like, if you go to get the, like, the Malto meal bags of cereal, where it's like a big plastic bag of Coco Dino Bites. God, ah, ah, yes. Love Coco Dino Bites. Anything that required money at school. If anything required bringing money to school, I just took it as something I'll have no part of. Thankfully, I had friends that were much the same, so we got through it well. Crayola. You knew if you were a Rose Art kid. My aunt, who lived far away, worked for Crayola Canada at one point and sent us a giant box of stuff one year. I still remember opening that box. What gets a lot of hate but deserves every bit of it? Child beauty pageants. Paper cuts. Waking up and having to 
pee so bad you have to get up but also so tired you can't. Content creators purposefully annoying people for likes. Nestle. That's a base dancer. Thank you. Mosquitoes. People who talk at the theater. Men of Reddit. What are some she's a 10 but for you when she thinks you're arguing every time you try to voice an issue that needs to resolve and she shuts you down effectively ruining mature conversation and therefore being in a state of perpetual disagreement or lack of proper efficient communication. She's a 10 but out of 100. Basic personality can turn a 10 to a 4 pretty quick. She's a 10 but it's on the pH scale. Hey that's a good one. In case you non-science nerds don't get it that means she's basic. She's a 10 but I'm a scrubby unpleasant can of ham so it's off. What? She's a 10 but I'm a 2. She's a 10 but in prison for honeymoon murder. She's a 10 but is happily married. She pours her milk before the cereal. Guys I must say something really controversial here. I don't do this. I don't I promise but what's the problem with it? It just means that less cereal gets milk on it and you get more crunchy crunch. She's a 10 but she's a Disney adult. She's a 10 but is unable to maintain deep ideological conversations. You sound boring. <laughs> Introvert people what are some annoying things extrovert people do? Why are you so quiet? I don't know. Why are you so loud? Yo why are you always so quiet? Inviting people from other social circles unannounced. What are you reading? What's it about? Talk constantly without saying anything. Always calling instead of texting. Oh I hate when people call me. Hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it. Just text me, I will respond to you. Feeling too confident in saying rubbish. Which show left you with a holy <laughs> that was a good show feeling at the end? For me, it was Steven Universe. Very good show. Uh, even Steven Universe Future. Very good. I love it. Chernobyl. Fleabag. It was getting better and better and I don't need any more because the ending was perfect. Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Ended on a super hopeful and satisfying note. Dark. Gotta say Adventure Time. That show made my childhood, man. Futurama. Bojack Horseman. Stranger things. I still haven't finished season four. What's the best rap line of all time? Honey plays me close like butter played toast. I never sleep because sleep is the cousin of death. She got a big booty so they call a big booty. Better wear a latex because you don't want that late text that I think I'm late text so wrap it up. Lollipop Lil Wayne. That's a really good line. <laughs> oh my god. What's a conspiracy theory? So obviously true but people still don't believe it. MK Ultra. People who aren't into conspiracy theories and actually haven't heard of it would probably not believe the US actually tried to make astronauts projection spies by giving people and torturing them but there's also a lot of BS claims about it that aren't true rocks are soft and squishy and only tense up when you touch them I hate how much I love this especially being near a coal mine the McDonald's employees just don't want to fix the ice cream machine sugar makes you fat been known since the 50s the CIA overthrew a lot of democratically elected socialist governments not really much of a conspiracy or a theory it says so on their wiki the moon landing was fake and filmed by Kubrick and his undying love for perfection pushed him to film on location. What's the most scariest or unsettling place you've ever been to? I think the most off experience I had was on the road from Wyoming to Red Rocks for a concert. We ran out of gas in the middle of nowhere in a reservation. Within five minutes, an older man pulled up in his pickup truck and asked us what we were doing there. We told him we were out of gas and he immediately grabbed a gas can out of his truck and started filling our tank. In the time it took him to do this, three more vehicles pulled up to where we were and just stayed there. We tried to offer the old man money for the gas and he just said, leave, just go, get out of here now. That is a little eerie. <laughs> That freaks me out just a little bit. When I was at university, there was an old abandoned mental hospital on a hill. It had been featured in a few scariest places in the US TV shows. My freshman year, our resident assistant took us all on a walking tour of the outside of the asylum. It wasn't so much that it looked scary, it did, but it had a whole vibe that made me feel unwelcome there. When I got back to my dorm the next day, I woke up to find my alarm clock had not gone off for class. I looked around my room and found all of my clocks were on different times by a few hours. The VCR, the microwave, the wall clock, my watch. Anyhow, the university City ended up buying the property and uses it today. I have no idea if the people there have creepy experiences. New Orleans is interesting because on one street you're fine and on the next you'll get shot by an 11 year old over $9. Corporate headquarters of this giant privately owned mega corporation in Atlanta. Soulless robotic people. Hard to explain the atmosphere but sort of a work will set you free kind of vibe. Creepiest place I've ever been. A playground that doubled as a bomb shelter. This is the reality for children who live there. It was painted bright colors but was disturbing. Carabash. Destroyed nature. Red. Toxic river black, man-made hills consisting of mining waste, poverty, and this hill roughly translated to God save us. It filled me with dread every time we drove by. Jesus, I looked it up and every picture looks like if a whole town could be a carcinogen. Lived in a 200 year old colonial house in Rhode Island as a kid. The basement was terrifying. There was a tangibly oppressive sense of evil the moment one walked down the stairs. My grandmother refused to go down after the first time whenever she visited. Turns out the original owner had been a slave smuggler. The DMZ in Korea is cool to visit but definitely bizarre and Tense. What is so ancient only an internet veteran can remember? ICQ. Uh, 
that sounds almost familiar, but may I'm okay. Typing random words and adding .com at the end and marveling that there either was or wasn't a website with that domain name. Guest books. Haven't seen one of those in many years. Did Facebook ever have that? I forget if that was a thing or if it was just MySpace. Bulletin board servers. This was the internet before there was an internet. That basically means PictoChat, right? More I read, more I realize I'm old. Those summer nights chatting with people on MSN Messenger and AOL, ICQ, Yahoo, etc. Nothing beats that feeling seeing your crush pop online. I mean, those services aren't really gone. We've just moved over to like Discord and stuff. Oh, uh, sorry, kitten messaged me. <laughs> ASL? For the young kids out there, that stands for American Sign Language? DancingBaby.gif? Why was that the funniest thing in the world to people? LimeWire? E-Mule? The internet is for porn. Shockingly, my mom introduced me to LimeWire so we could start pirating music, but now I have to show her how to reset the router, so it's a little weird trade-off there. Neopets. Mine is old enough to buy his own alcohol. You should probably check in on him. I make sure he's doing okay. Top 8 friends on MySpace. Well, it was nice. I see why now, like, it might not be the best because some of your friends might be like, oh, I'm not in your top 8. Oh, why? <laughs> the original Space Jam website. Here, untouched by time. Oh my god, it looks so janky and bad. Oh, it's awesome. Which movies do you think are straight up propaganda? Evolution. It's just a head and shoulders commercial. Top Gun was a recruitment movie. Well, yeah, if we're recruiting people to be homosexual. I mean, did you see the volleyball scene? Birth of a Nation. What a travesty that this was the first feature length movie. Yeah, really disgusting stuff. American Sniper. Pretty much any like war movie during the Afghan period. Yeah, that's propaganda. All the Transformers movies are grossly pro-military and packed full of product placement. They are absolutely propaganda films about how great it is to be an American. In fact, the budget for the movies is funded by the military. Well, at least the military used the budget for something. Most military movies are. Any movie that portrays the military in good light is propaganda. Even Ed Nudj. But I wonder what it says. American Sniper, and it's not even subtle. Don't Look Up is completely about climate change. It's good propaganda though, but propaganda is still propaganda. What are you scared of as an adult that you were not as a child? My parents getting older. Climbing things, lifting heavy objects. Yeah, I think I'm at the point where if I lift another heavy box, uh, <laughs> this back is going to break. Finances. As a kid, money is very abstract. As an adult, you're always asking yourself, do I really need to buy this? And the answer is always yes, because you can't help yourself. Amusement park rides. I used to be fearless. Now I just see them as mechanical failures waiting to happen. Sounds like somebody watched too many Final Destination movies. Sleeping in an unergonomic position. My neck, my back, my bussy, and my crack. It all fucking hurts. Please make it stop. Falling. I think that's just like an innate fear most people have, right? Small talk. I wouldn't say it's so much of a fear as a, I don't want to. Everything. I feel like the world got scarier as an adult. Probably as something to do with the fact that your brain now can conceive that the world is huge and there are a million things that can kill you. Sorry, a billion things that can kill you. Election results. Oh yeah, that one's a real bummer for me. When the universe ends, what song will you play over the end credits? What a Wonderful World by Louis Armstrong. Good choice, but it is like for the comedy aspect, right? So long and thanks for all the fish. Carry on my wayward son. Not my first choice, but I guess I see it working. Working? It's the end of the world as we know it by R.E.M. Oh, well, I mean, of course. What I've done! The end credits for Transformers 2007. I forgore the name. What I've done by Linkin Park. I think this is actually the only correct answer. And sorry I didn't give a stunning performance, okay? I can't scream right now. Never Gonna Give You Up by Rick Astley. One last Rick roll to send the universe off. I'm blue da ba dee da ba die. However it's spelled. That one. Okay, so I'm Blue by Eiffel 65. Got it. Pixies, where is my mind? You know, that's actually, I like that one. That, that would be a good ending. Wii Sports theme. <laughs> Just the idea of like a singularity black hole sucking in the world, but it just pops up with. 
right before you get vaporized. What 90s movie is 10 out of 10? The Silence of the Lambs. Well, it does put the lotion on its skin. Shawshank Redemption. Office Space. Ah, yes, another really good movie that I have yet to watch. The Truman Show. Beautiful movie, but I don't like the repercussions that a lot of people think that they're being Truman showed right now. Pulp Fiction. It is really good, but I... Maybe I'm dumb. I don't get it. Like, I don't get the point. 10 things I hate about you. Nothing wrong with good old rom-coms. They were, like, top tier in the 90s. Thelma and Louise. Clueless. That's a gay movie, right? That That's a movie for the gays. Gays and girls, am I right? <laughs> the Green Mile. Closest I've been to crying as an adult. I think I watched that way too young because I do not remember anything from it. Cool Runnings. Oh my god, that was a Disney movie? Huh, the more you know. Forrest Gump. Lieutenant Dan, they said my movie is really good. <laughs> Fargo. Look, I I can't have seen every movie, all right? Mrs. Doubtfire. Really can't see any other actor pulling that off because Robin Williams just, oh, he just sold it. What is something movies always get wrong? One big thing is that most phone calls in movies, somebody just ends the call. They don't say bye or anything. They just close the phone or just hit end. Exposition. No one talks like that. Yeah, but you kind of have to suspend disbelief, like for a movie's sake at least. Hacking. Clacking key keyboard. I'm in. Yeah, real life hacking is a lot more boring. Huge living spaces with nice art and decor for characters in underpaid professions. Well, every movie they have to have rich people. Simply tying a rope around your waist will prevent you from falling to the ground, but it will also crush your internal organs and likely break your back. Keyboards don't have send keys. The closest we have is return, but I don't even have that on my keyboard. Natural convos between characters. I do still like like when movies try really hard to make it sound as natural as possible, but it's like Hollywood natural, so it's still very scripted and exactly pointed. I hate it when characters take a few bites out of their breakfast, have a sip of their juice, and be on their merry way. It's like, no, you gotta sit, you need to finish. You have all that food and you're wasting it. What's the most reposted question on this subreddit? What should X, men or women, know about the other gender? What is not a cult, but acts like one? Definitely read that one before. What is the most most overrated movie of all time. And the most common answers are Avatar, Black Panther, Wonder Woman, Frozen, and La La Land. What is legal but shouldn't be? Or literally any variation of that. What conspiracy theory do you believe is true? There's always a copy of it in the new section, and the true reason why is horrifying. What's the true reason? Like, I've, you gotta fill us in here, pal. What's the best question to ask to get positive karma? Not that one. What'd you do? Insert trivial thing here for 96 quadrillion dollars. Yeah, the questions are always like, oh, would you kiss your dog on the head for fun just for 96 million dollars? Like, maybe? I don't know. I feel like I've seen what album is a 10 out of 10 so many times lately. Honestly, where are the philosophers? We need new questions. When was the last time someone said they love you? Your mom doesn't count, all right? She said it to me last night, but I don't want to be rude. On Monday, my youngest daughter, eight years old, said that I am not just her dad, I'm also her best friend. That's probably the best compliment you can get from a kid. Starts crying uncontrollably. <laughs> Before I left for work this morning. My mom says it fairly frequently, but romantically, it's been a little over three years. That's why I said your mom doesn't count. Oh, it's been years now. I would say it now, but I'm afraid of commitment, so I, good luck. I don't know, maybe 17 years? I love you. That's sweet, and I appreciate the effort. Well, it's worth I love you right back. And then they kiss, and then they have lots of babies. Last night, when I talked to my son for an hour about Sonic, that that's a good dad. Letting your kid talk about their interests, you are the best possible dad. My cat just said it with her eyes. Yeah, but are you sure? Not to be like a Debbie Downer, but she could have just been blinking really slowly. Ketchup doesn't exist. What's your next choice? On what? It varies wildly depending on that. Death. That's being a little dramatic, I think. There are plenty of other condiments in the sea, or in the fridge, or cabinet. I don't, um. A sauce made with tomato paste, vinegar, spices and salt. But what would you call it? HP Brown Sauce. That's not a real thing. Nobody would ever name their brand Brown Sauce. Ranch. This is the only good answer so far, except for the one saying it depends on what you're putting it on. Because if you put ranch on a burger, uh, well, actually, 
Sriracha. It's just spicy ketchup, isn't it? Dead horse. In Australia, we use tomato sauce. Dead horse, not ketchup. So dead horse will do me. Again, what is this Australia people keep talking about in their fantasy foods? French fries with mayo. Uh, no, 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 wrong. Honey mustard. Not a huge fan of mustard, but I, I do see the appeal. Chipotle mayo. Now that type of mayo I can see working. Regular mayo? What are you thinking? Gravy. Oh, oh yes, poutine. Oh, baby. What's a common element from 90s or 2000s sitcoms that has aged poorly? Uh, probably gay jokes. People living far beyond their means. Sex in the city comes into my mind. Clip shows. I am doing a binge on Family Ties currently, and they have about one clip show per year. Same premise every time. A visitor arrives and the family reminisces about previous episode. I hated these back then, and I completely skip them in the rewatch now. I think those were just designed if like you weren't able to fully keep up with the show, you could maybe just watch that and get the gist of what was happening. Sex being portrayed as a currency, the wife doles out when she needs something from the husband or to reward him for obeying her. Straight people are so weird. The ugly years for the gorgeous main character are usually just the actor in a fat suit and fake braces. Bonus points for glasses. I don't know if this fits into this category, but they're nice bedrooms. The kids' rooms are always huge and so greatly decorated. I used to draw floor plans for my dream room at age six, lol. The playboy character who makes elaborate schemes to get with women. Yeah, just by today's standards, really creepy to go out of your way just to bang someone. The uptight, joyless mother. And the way too loose, fun dad. Also, the very intelligent and hot mom married to the fat slob idiot father. Straight married people People hate each other. That's all sitcoms portrayed. The incompetent dad. The dad is always portrayed as an idiot that can't do anything without the wife telling him how. Partially, I think that's the Simpsons effect. Broke characters or middle class ones having really nice homes slash apartments slash being clearly comfortable. Yeah, that was always one thing in Friends when they're like, oh, I'm so poor, yet you're living in a really nice apartment in the middle of New York. Are you crazy? Yo, what's up, my dog? every black friend on every sitcom for years. Yeah, the formula of sitcoms in the 90s and 2000s was, oh, stereotype equals funny. Ha 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 ha. If you're persistent enough, the girl will fall for you. You just need to keep showing up at her house and job unannounced. Awkward nerds with obsessive crushes. Their behavior was portrayed as adorable, but it set a really bad precedent for people with unrequited love that it was normal to stalk someone, and for women on the receiving end that they had to put up with someone who made them uncomfortable. The token gay neighbor, whose only role is to be as flaming as possible and remind everyone at every opportunity that they were, in fact, gay. And often that would be the only point of the joke with them. Like, they would show up and they'd say something. It's like, well, he's gay. Bill Cosby. You know, didn't think about it until you said it, and now that's all I can think about. What is the most quotable movie of all time? Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Bring out your dad. Never knew why that was the funniest bit to me of just people wheeling around a wheelbarrow and dumping bodies in it. Office space. It got my favorite line to use in my daily struggle of working in retail. It's not that I'm lazy, it's just that I don't care. The Princess Bride. Whoa, big shocker, I haven't seen it. <laughs> Anchorman. Probably my favorite, it's not like quotable, but my favorite part is when Jack Black kicks the dog off the bridge. It's pretty, <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Blazing Saddles. Alright, I really gotta start a list or something because I need to watch all these movies. Mean Girls. Get in, loser. We're going shopping. Austin Powers. For as much as a horn dog as he was, he was very respectful of women. He denies having sex with someone when they're drunk. Step Brothers. Still very good. I can see a few of the jokes maybe not landing today. Hot Fuzz. I mean, of course, Edgar Wright knows how to make quotable movies. What existed when you were a kid that doesn't exist now? Internet that came on a disc. Sometimes the disc came in a cereal box. Why is the internet and this disc doing that? Restaurant smoking sections. I mean, technically, wouldn't that be like a patio section now? Because who wants to smoke indoors? Nine planets. Hey, you shut up. Pluto is still a planet, okay? Getting off the phone so someone can use the internet. <laughs> Waiting all night to record your favorite song on cassette tape, videotapes, and VHS tape rewinders. Weren't those already kind of obsolete? Because wouldn't most VHS players have a rewind? 
Rewinder in it? Kmart Cafeteria. Same with Target. I mean, some of them still have their little cafe, but it's not the same vibe. Blockbuster. Oh, how I pray for the day we get to see the buster of blocks. Toys R Us. It is really sad because there's a Babies R Us, you know, same thing, that I drive past every so often, and it's just an empty shell of a building. Like, the sign is falling apart and everything. 8-track tapes and rotary dial phones. 8-tracks are still kind of alive, right? Like the enthusiasts out there? The hope of retiring and enjoying my sunset years. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Good luck with that one. The mall to hang out. I went to the local mall here, and geez, it's depressing. Like, no stores are open anymore, and it's just a ghost town. Tamagotchi. Those are still around, just not like the exact same that you had in the 90s. Pay phones. Oh, yeah, I think I heard in New York they took out the last working payphone, which is really bad, I think. Buying comic books off the newsstand or at the grocery store. I'd probably still buy Spider-Man comics if I could get them at the same place as my milk, cheese, and bread. The fear of nuclear war caused by Russia. Oh, wait, it's back. Feeling like a kid again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what statement screams, I just lost the argument. Generally, the moment you revert to just insulting someone's appearance, that's it, you're done. Pointing out a small discrepancy in an otherwise factual statement and pretending that invalidates their whole argument. I saw you get in a blue car and drive off with your secret lover when you said you were going for a walk. You're completely wrong. It was a blue SUV and I did go for a walk after. As soon as someone shifts the goalposts, it is important to be able to identify this. It is also important to know the difference between this and someone wording their initial argument poorly. You spelled X the wrong way. Yes and? Are you going to contribute to the conversation? I don't even care. Or this is dumb. It's them trying to avoid admitting that they're wrong. I know you are, but what am I? I mean, yeah, if you're arguing with like fourth graders, you just lost a customer. I want to talk to your manager. I know the manager. Uh-huh, sweetie, I'm sure you do. Now please get in your car and never come back. Thanks. I don't care what the data says. I think it's circumstantial when they say this. Like if it's a hypothetical argument, then sure. But if they're blatantly ignoring what you're telling them is true, then yeah, they lost. When you scream, I just lost the argument. It is a bold move, but I respect the decision. What's your current addiction? Unfortunately, I'm going to have to say Valorant. I, I'm, oh, I'm, oh, it's so bad. I can't stop daydreaming while listening to music. I love creating scenarios in my head. Fast food. That shit is hard to get off of. It's really just the convenience factor that makes you not ever want to cook at home. You're like, oh, I mean, I could just spend extra and get it now. My effing phone. Sounds like a Zoomer to me, am I right? <laughs> you know how kids always be on they phone? I can't stop eating samosas. I used to have that. Good times. This fucking phone. Social media and Reddit. Well, the easiest solution is delete Reddit and break your phone. <laughs> electricity. It's where I get all my current. Just couldn't resist. That's another joke. That's another electrician joke, isn't it? The resist part? Shut up. Pedro Pascal. He has rotted my brain. No thoughts. Just Pedro. All right, let me just get this hammer here and bonk back to horny jail with you. Spanking my monkey. All right, I'm glad I still have the hammer. Bonk back to horny jail. What is wrong with you people? What is a show you hate that everyone loves? I wouldn't say I hate it, but I lost interest in The Walking Dead pretty early on. It was just so repetitive after a while. Any reality show. Never understand how people like to watch reality-themed shows and contests. The only couple I like are the ones that I really watched growing up, like Amazing Race and Survivor. Maybe Big Brother, but meh. Grey's Anatomy. How unlucky can one hospital be? The Office. I get it. It is a great show. The four episodes I have seen are brilliantly written and brilliantly acted. But I can't do cringe humor. I get tremendous fremschimmen. The German word roughly meaning secondary shame. Listen, y'all, I'm trying with these words, but this is the best you get from me. A dumb American. <laughs> Bachelor, Bachelorette, Real Housewives, The View, Dancing with the Stars, Sports Talk Shows. I just don't have time to keep up with so many of these shows. Like, God, what do you do with your day? Big Mouth. I just don't find it funny. It's all so very loud. And also the art style is absolutely disgusting. Don't care what you say. It's really gross to look at. Big Bang Theory. This show is Karen's potato salad with no seasoning. I had to go to a Big O Tires to get some new tires and on their TV screens, all they had 
was Big Bang Theory, and it became a hostile environment for me. Peaky Blinders. I just couldn't get into it. I mean, that's fair. It's just a bunch of British people in, like, olden days, right? What is the show about? <laughs> Friends. Never watched it. Never will. At this point, I've watched Friends so many times, it's just purely a comfort thing rather than a watch it and laugh again thing. How I Met Your Mother. Why was that popular? It's not funny. At all. Well, that's an opinion. I have no real say on if it's wrong or right, so I'll leave it at that. Euphoria. Why sexualize high school students? That is extremely valid. I think the show is shot really well, but they didn't need it to be set in high school. Could be college. Tiger King. Have absolutely no will to ever watch it. You and me both. Jeez. Game of Thrones. The first few seasons are really good, but yeah, I mean, it's fair to not like it after hearing about the eighth season. Squid Game. It could be better if there weren't a bunch of cringe posts about it. I heard the hype, but saw no memes or anything about it. Enjoyed it. I just got scared at how quickly I saw merch showing up in gas stations? Like, are you insane? The question is asked every day, and the answer is always the same. How'd you get that scar? Ran headfirst into a door. Boom. I fell forward horsing around on New Year's, and my teeth went through my lip. It's still there 22 years later. So you're saying your teeth are still in your lip? You didn't go to a doctor in 22 years? Fell off a semi-truck with a glass bottle in my hand. Okay, that I would like to hear more about that story, actually. My hand touched the electric element in the oven. Man, what does the scar look like? It's about an inch long. Happened over 20 years ago. A nail went through my finger as a toddler. Jesus? Someone shut my arm in the 800 oven on accident. When I used to work at Jimmy John's, you would often get a Jimmy tat, which was getting burned by the oven door, which was around 400 degrees, so if you're saying 800? My lord. I fell off a skateboard and bit a hole right through my lip. The tooth fragment is still inside and I can wiggle it around in there. <laughs> Gross. I don't like that, actually. Like all Canadians? Hockey. Knife thrown at my face, right between the eyes. Total surprise from an unexpected direction. I caught it with my offhand and it stuck. I'm crediting my ancestors with that one. What's the most overrated drink? G Fuel is just caffeinated Kool-Aid. You kids are getting ripped off. Starbucks coffee. Burnt is not a flavor. I'll never fully understand coffee snobs. Like, there are a lot of reasons to not like Starbucks, but burnt? Like, burnt coffee? I, how do you taste that? Mountain Dew. Sounds refreshing, but feels like you're drinking syrup. Yeah, so refreshing? Anything that isn't water. Water is the only appropriately hyped drink. I don't know. I, if you drink too much of that stuff, you can drown, so it's a little scary. Energy drinks taste like absolute <laughs> Edit. Okay, guys. 90% of them taste like <laughs> So what are the 10% of energy drinks that you like? I have my downvote finger ready for the people who say Dr. Pepper. I think you can holster that finger for now, my friend. What is your favorite quote from TV series? Well, 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 how the turntables. I love it when a plan comes together. I often forget the A-Team was a TV show. Your booze mean nothing. I've seen what makes you cheer. Uh, please let me know what these quotes are from, because I am so lost. It's just myself talking to myself about myself. Squee. <laughs> I can't, I can't do a Cartman. Screw you guys. <laughs> I can't. Screw you guys, I'm going home. That's the best Cartman you're going to get out of me. I mean, come on. That's not a knife. I see you've played Knifey Spoonie before. Teachers have read it. What's a dead giveaway that the project is done by a parent? The smell of coffee and alcohol, usually. When the kids know nothing about the project contents or the project is done almost perfectly. The kid walks into the science fair looking well rested and happy. The parent looks like they have existed on coffee and Red Bull for the past three weeks. I never understood, like, how do you get your parents to do your projects for you? Like, that never happened. Pinewood Derby car was perfectly carved into a Mustang with high gloss automotive paint. But what if the kid really likes cars? You never know. I was an English teacher and had a student turn in a paper that reflected the opposite ideals that they had previously professed in class. When I asked her about her thought process, she completely blanked. Deer in headlights look. She did confess to her mom doing it for her, which I had a conversation with her 
and her mom about. Because my student wasn't the only one who messed up. Adults should know better. Veteran teacher here. We respect you asking in Reddit before starting your child's project. Good luck, but your child's teacher will probably still know. Definitely handwriting. It's like parents need to learn how to do a reverse form of forgery where they have to make their handwriting worse because their four-year-old doesn't know cursive yet. Well, I gotta skedaddle, so remember to look both ways before crossing the river. My name has been Brandon, and I will see you in another one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!